as you go through life thinking critically and you have conversations with other people who want to think critically, you're going to tend to get into fights and arguments from time to time. Of course, people do that all the time, but if you can think critically, then your arguments and your disagreements with other people don't need to be so ugly. Of course, an argument is actually a critical thinking idea or a critical thinking conversation. Arguments don't need to be angry or hostile, but they often can be. When you're having a discussion with people, if they don't know how to think critically, you need to know this right away and say to yourself, if I keep using ideas from critical thinking, this person will think I want to attack him. So I have to be very careful of what I say and probably not say much at all. If I say too many ideas, this person will think I just want to sound smarter than him because he doesn't understand the value of new ideas and thinking critically. Don't think of yourself as better than other people, but you need to know if people can't think critically and you try to talk critical thinking talk with them, they will think that you want to think that you're better than them, even though you don't. Of course, it really is their responsibility to learn critical thinking, but you want to avoid a bloodbath if you can. If you're talking with someone and things start to go ugly, the most important thing to remember is a judge. Do not judge. There are judges in the world. At the company, there's the boss. In the family, there's mom and dad, or maybe grandma and grandpa if the parents and kids aren't getting along. In different organizations, like let's say a local group of Christians, you might have the pastor or you might have the organization leader. You might have a police officer on the street who's a small, short-term judge for the immediate time being. In the military, you have ranking officers. In the courtroom, you have a real judge. There are judges in the world. Judges help settle disputes because they actually have the power to decide. Even if they're wrong, at least they can decide and stop the fighting. Judges can be very good. The problem with judging is when there isn't a judge around. We're all just equal, but we try to judge each other. When there's not a judge, do not try to judge other people. Not judging is the first thing to understand when you're having a disagreement with someone. Now, this includes you being much older than someone else. Just because you're older or just because you have more experience in life doesn't mean that you're suddenly a judge. You have to actually have the power of the purse or the law in order to be a judge. For example, if you're the 50-year-old and you have some 20-year-old who thinks you're wrong and he's going to show you why, you cannot judge him. Now, you can tell him, don't judge me, but you can't judge him either. You're technically equals. My grandmother reminded me of this often. Of course, my grandmother also told me that being older doesn't make you judge. Being older makes you responsible if there's a fight. If you're older, that doesn't mean that you can tell him how it is. That means if there's a fight, it's your fault. Older people should act like it. Being older doesn't make you judge. It makes you responsible. So, when you're talking with other people and there's not a judge around and things seem to go a little bit difficult, you don't want to punch the other person's lights out, so to speak. You don't want to tell him he's wrong so he sees it like they do at the end of every single TV show on network TV. No, you want to make sure people walk away without being bloody, not physically, not emotionally. You don't want to have a real or metaphoric bloodbath. So, here are a few hats that you can wear in critical thinking that might help you to avoid a bloodbath. Don't let the other person hurt you and don't you hurt the other person either. 
The first hat is the teacher hat. This is the talking expert. I am the expert, and I'm talking. Please don't interrupt. Let me finish. I'll take questions at the end. If you don't understand, I will talk more and help you understand. If you don't agree, I don't care. If I'm wrong, you won't know why. You won't be able to help me. Maybe I'm too stupid. But if I'm wrong, you're not going to be able to help me here. So I don't want to hear about it. If you disagree with me, that's okay. I don't care. I'm just talking. I'm an expert. I'm not always right, but I know what I'm talking about. I'm here to give you my idea so you can think critically and go out and do it on your own. If I'm wrong, don't tell me. Just go prove it. Write a book, and maybe I'll let you be the teacher, and you can be the talking expert, and I'll listen to what you have to say. That's the talking expert. It's a very good way to avoid a fight. The key here is not to tell people, I'm the expert teacher, you be quiet. It means, if you disagree with me, that's all right, I don't really care. I'm just giving my idea, because that's what teachers do. At least, that's what good teachers do. Another critical thinking hat is the librarian hat. Hmm, I know where you can read more about that. I don't really know about that, but I know where you can learn about it. For example, if you ask a librarian, what do you think about peace and war? The librarian won't say it's good or it's bad. The librarian will say, peace and war. What do I think? I think it's up on the second floor over at the north end. Do you need help getting there? The librarian will not act like an expert. The librarian doesn't know. The librarian will say, oh, someone wrote a book about that. In fact, many people did. It's a whole section. A librarian will say, hmm, I don't want to talk about that. Use Google. Here are a few words you can use to do your research. The librarian stays out of the conversation and doesn't get in a fight. Being the librarian is a very important part of answering questions. Even an expert teacher will often start answering a question from a student with the librarian hat. Ravi Zacharias would often do this at Q&A sessions. A student would ask him a question, and before he gave his answer, he would say, this question is about the topic of, and then he'd say what the topic is, and then he would continue. It's a very good and wise thing to do to wear a librarian hat, even if just for a moment. The last hat here is the messenger hat. Other people decide. I just report. I didn't make the decision. I just have to give you the letter. Don't argue with me. And really, it has to be true. If it is your decision, don't say that it's not. This really is for real messengers. Oftentimes, I'll talk with people and they'll say, well, that's not right. I don't agree. I'll say, well, I don't know. All I know is what he said. I'm not saying that he's right or wrong. I'm only saying that he said that. Well, but he shouldn't say that. Oh, would you like his phone number? Or maybe, maybe that's not appropriate depending on the conversation. I'll say, hmm, maybe he shouldn't have said that. I, I don't know. I only know that these were his words. It's kind of the mailman hat or the UPS man hat or maybe the news reporter hat. It's the messenger hat. Now, each of these hats have others. We could have the guest speaker hat, the secretary, the journalist. There are lots of different ways to look at hats to wear, but the teacher, librarian, and messenger hats are a simple way to remember them. A guest speaker, well, he's kind of an expert. Maybe someone you're interviewing. The police might interview someone, or a journalist might interview someone. One time, Cal Thomas was a guest on Chris Fabry's talk show at the MBI radio network. Chris Fabry was talking and talking, and Cal Thomas, the guest, finally interrupted and said, Chris, I'm the guest. You have me here so I can talk. If you want to do the talking, you come on my show and you can be my guest, and then you can talk. That's an example of how the guest speaker needs to talk, and Cal Thomas reminded Chris Fabry of that fact. Also, you have the secretary. The secretary doesn't tell people where to find the books. They say who to talk to. But 
a secretary really is a lot like a librarian because a librarian does have a phone book. And if the librarian is in a company or school library, they also have a school directory. So the secretary and the librarian are a lot the same, but they can be different. The messenger can also be like a journalist who simply finds facts and reports them. You know the journalist motto, chase the story, gather the facts, provide context and background, report without fear or favor. That's the journalist way. Well, a messenger is being told to deliver a message. A journalist is out trying to find the message, but they're very, very similar. I say that a journalist really is a messenger because a messenger does deliver the newspaper in the morning. So I just look at it as the teacher, the librarian, and the messenger. Wear one of these hats and it really isn't so much about trying to put the other person in his place. No, no, no. Wearing one of these hats tells you what to do. It tells you to behave yourself. It tells you, oh, no, no, don't go there. Don't argue with him. Don't judge him. Stick to your role and don't go beyond that. And then we won't have a fight. Now, in critical thinking, the key is that you don't judge. That's the purpose of wearing these hats. These critical thinking hats are not gimmicks. These are not cute little things you can say to win. It doesn't work that way. Now, there are two more hats that you might think about if things are really going difficult. One is the parliamentarian. This reminds people of the rules. That question isn't appropriate. We really shouldn't ask that here. If we want to talk about that another time and place, maybe you should write me a letter first. Or, time's almost up. We've got five minutes. Can we move along? Or, you've got five minutes. One time I was talking with someone on the street and he was trying to lecture me and trying to take a long, long, long way to make his point. And usually people do that when they think they're not going to convince you, so they do what's called filibustering. And I very politely, very frankly told him, the bus is coming. He says, I don't see it. I said, but it's still coming and you need to hurry up and make your point because I want to understand what you have to say. That was the parliamentarian. The parliamentarian is the expert on the rules about how to talk and discuss. It's actually a position in British Parliament or in US Congress. The parliamentarian may also say, I listened to you, now it's your turn to listen to me. And you don't say it in a mean, condemning, I listen to you, now you listen to me. You don't say it that way. That's not the parliamentarian. It's just a fact of procedure. I listened to you for a while, now you listen to me. We all get a chance to talk. That's the parliamentarian. If you're really desperate and things are breaking down, you can be the parliamentarian. One last way to be the parliamentarian is to say, we're talking about this. It helps people stay on topic. If communication breaks down and everyone is fighting, 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 just you and one person or many people, it can really help to get a good reminder about what topic we're talking about. I'm here to talk about why we're buying hazelnut coffee. That can really settle things down quickly. Don't do the parliamentarian often, but if communication's breaking down, the parliamentarian hat returning to basic rules and procedure can be very helpful. Another hat to wear is the Socrates hat. This is the hat where you always ask why. Answer questions with questions. Now, remember, this isn't a tactic. It isn't a gimmick. It isn't something to do when you're losing to guarantee that you can win. No, the Socrates hat is answering questions with real questions. Someone asks you a question because they're trying to trap you, but there's actually something bigger truly going on. And by you asking the question, you can help that person understand. It's not mean. It's not putting people in their place. It's not a way to escape. Jesus would wear the Socrates hat. Now, some people might say that Socrates wore the Jesus hat, but Socrates came first in history. Socrates would keep asking why. Jesus would also answer questions with questions or ask why. Now, 
Rob Bell would wear the Socrates hat very often. It irritated people. The problem with Rob Bell, though, and it did blow up in his face because eventually he did leave his job and he did have a lot of disagreement and loss of respect from his own community, and that's not good if you're trying to be respected. Rob Bell would use this too much. He used it as a tactic. Rob Bell would answer a question with a question even when he didn't need to. And that irritated people, and that's why it didn't work for him forever. Answer a question with a question if the question truly is better. For that, you'll need critical thinking. Remember, these are not tactics. These are good methods. If you're going to answer a question with a question, you really do need to understand a lot more. And again, the goal is to avoid a bloodbath. Every time Jesus answered a question with a question, it silenced his enemies, it helped everyone learn, and everyone walked away unharmed. When Jesus was finally crucified, he was no longer answering questions with questions. If you try to overcome a fight, and if people keep fighting with you, and you just can't win, maybe it's time to consider that you're wrong. Being wrong is not bad. In fact, odds are you're wrong. Most of us statistically are wrong. Very few people are right as much as we would like to be. It's not bad being wrong. Just know when you're wrong. And ask when you're wrong. Ask if you're wrong, and when you're wrong, ask questions. Celebrate when you're wrong. It's a good thing to be wrong. Admit when you're wrong. That's not just part of critical thinking. That's part of growing up. Because... When you're wrong, that actually is when you are beginning to think critically.